Sunrise and sunset are the most dramatic parts of the day. There is dynamic, there is color change, there's contrast. Whereas daylight during the day or darkness during the night are fairly static in comparison. In this tutorial, we will take the dramatic image of the rising sun internally. What does the appearance of light mean? We will look at it as self-observation in the sense of directing a ray of attention within me to my inner functions. We will draw from the Genesis story of creation, specifically the creation of light, and we will use a depiction of that story in the San Marco mosaics in Venice. We will see why our effort to be conscious must include an element of self-observation, and we will set a weekly exercise to introduce self-observation to our moment-to-moment -moment efforts to be. Self-observation is an instrument of self-change, a means of awakening. By observing himself, man throws, as it were, a ray of light onto his inner processes, which have hitherto worked in complete darkness. And under the influence of this light, the processes themselves begin to change. Let's begin by stepping back to take a broader look at the bee pyramid. The pyramid which we use for these tutorials is constructed with scale and relativity. This means that each of its ideas are of a different level of importance and relate to each other differently. The most important idea is the idea of consciousness. And because this teaching teaches a practical attainment of consciousness rather than just theoretical discussion about it, we denote consciousness by the active command, be. All the other ideas exist to support it, to raise it on a pedestal. All are included in it, just like all the bricks of a pyramid share in the weight of the capstone. One of the more important of these ideas is self-observation. To be, in the true sense of the word, has to include an awareness of myself an observation of myself. Many teachings speak of the necessity of developing consciousness, whether they call it being present or watchfulness or mindfulness. But if they exclude the element of self-observation, then the effort to be remains incomplete and cannot grow. This is because be is the point of intersection of two worlds, my microcosmos and the macrocosmos of which I'm part. To be in the true sense of the word means to be aware of both, of myself as a part in the whole. And the more that ability develops, and the more I can observe within and without, the more I see the relation of the two and how the two reflect each other. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was in chaos, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The story of creation, as well as the mosaic depiction of it, does not begin with the first act, which is creation of light, it begins a moment before, a moment of darkness and chaos. Then God says, let there be light, and then there is light. What is this darkness? What is this moment before the light of self-observation turns on? How do I look a moment before I awaken? Am I milling about an account I have with somebody? Or am I typing on my keyboard all the muscles of my body fully tensed unnecessarily? Or am I just rambling in some vague imagination passing from thought to thought? Or all the above? How does my darkness look the moment before the sun begins to rise? And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. 
and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. The San Marco mosaics depict the moment before. The Spirit of God, designated by a white dove, is fluttering over dark and chaotic waters. The next register in the creation mosaic shows the creation of light, but it also shows the division of light from darkness. According to this mosaic, both happen simultaneously. Just like in a natural sunrise, the horizon divides between the luminous sky and the dark earth, so in the Venice mosaic of creation, the creation of light is immediately accompanied by this division. The moment the light of self-observation appears, it is contrasted by the darkness that preceded it, and it's this contrast that is the subject of our tutorial. To begin self-observation and self-study, it is necessary to divide oneself. A man must realize that he indeed consists of two men. One is the man he calls I, and who others call Uspensky. The other is the real he, the real I, which appears in his life only for very short moments, and which can become firm and permanent only after a very lengthy period of work. The darkness has turned into light, but I still see my chaos. I see what it was that kept me a moment ago in the dark. As a rule, we do not find it pleasant to see our chaos. So, if we catch ourselves milling over an account, we immediately move on and disregard it as if it didn't happen. Or if I catch my body tense in front of the computer, I immediately release it and prove my posture as if it hadn't happened. However, only by seeing our chaos can we gain better control over it, can we learn to counteract it with good habits. So this week, we will focus on that moment of awakening, on those inner sunrises, specifically on observing both the darkness and the light, both the chaos and the self-observation rising beyond the horizon, so to speak. In trying to analyze some phenomenon that he comes across within him, a man generally asks, what is this? Why does it happen in this way and not in some other way? Becoming more and more engrossed in these questions, he completely loses the thread of self-observation and even forgets about it. Observation stops. And this will be our exercise for this week, to add the element of self-observation to our moment-to-moment -moment efforts to be. An important element that will affect the results of this exercise will be our uh, urge to analyze and change what we see. It's very important to avoid that for this week. Analysis and change will come later, but this week we are specifically trying to train the muscle of self-observation. So our aim will not be to change or analyze what we see, but simply to see that moment before, that chaos before the light. We will again use our ringtones and message tones to remind us to be, but this time also to remind us to see. Whenever our light turns on, to bravely focus on seeing and record what we see. Taking note of our observations will help us remember them. The observations we gather this week will serve as material for next week's topic, the topic of setting small aims, we must first see our mechanicality before we can set practical aims around it. Later on you will learn that the practice of self-remembering connected with self-observation and with the struggle against imagination has not only a psychological meaning, but it also changes the subtlest part of our metabolism and produces definite chemical or perhaps it is better to say alchemical effects in our body. Mm -hmm.